Hey, man. Welcome to In the Skewed View. And this week we are going to be talking about the 2010 Buddy Cop smash hit. Well, maybe not much, so much a smash hit, but we're going to be talking about Cop Out this week. Guys, what's up? I'm Travis Hayward with an askewed view here, as always, with the great Jordan Brandon. And today we're going to be talking about Cop Out. It's <laughs> a very interesting film in Kevin's yeah career. It, it's not. I mean, I know we had talked about Jersey Girl being a strange film. This one is somehow even stranger. Yeah, this one is. Uh, the, this one kind of. It's kind of. A little, you you wouldn't really expect this kind of thing from Kevin, and I mean it makes sense. He did this is the first movie he uh, he did not write this movie, but he did direct it. Um, but this is the first time that he was ever really kind of a director for hire, as opposed to actually creating these characters and scenarios himself. So this is you know it feels very different, but it's uh, um, you know it's it uh, that, that's the, at its core it doesn't feel so much like a Kevin Smith movie, but uh, you it, there are little bits here and there that kind of you know, like it, you kind of see the bit of a Kevin Smith stamp of, I mean, well, like the cast in the movie. Yes. I'll give you casting. Mm-hmm. Definitely casting. Cause that's, yeah. you could see his trademark there with the people that he could tell has good comic timing and things like that. Mm-hmm. And it fits, yeah. but like, unlike Jersey girl, where there are little bits of like jokes here and there and people that he knows in the cast and stuff like that, enough to make it a Kevin Smith film. It feels like this one is completely lacking his, his heart and soul. Yeah, this is, um, it, uh, it, it really does. It kind of, you know, the, and I feel that that's what the, uh, the, um, the screenplay written by the, uh, the Colin brothers, uh, didn't really, um, you know, like it, uh, it, it's not, it's really not what Kevin puts into his work typically. Um, it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's somebody else, um, you know, somebody else's creation and, and that, you know, Kevin is just kind of setting in emotion They're with doing uh, it. Yeah. The well, actor, the question but, is, yeah. how did that come about? Cause that's not something he would do. If anything, it feels like a step down as deep into his career as he had been. What 2010, mm-hmm. he's been going for at least 15 years now. He's got a really good list of films that even if they're not all blockbusters, most of them are cult films. So to do this, to be a director for hire, feels like a step back. Yeah, it kind of does. Um, I feel like this sort of came at a point where, um, at least based upon what I, what I know from Kevin and about Kevin, uh, this uh, this had happened, it was uh, shortly after Zach and Miri made a, Make a Porno had been released, which, uh, oh, by the way, which we'll, uh, we'll be getting to that episode next. Uh, but um, <laughs> uh, as far as... Uh, uh, as far as that is concerned, right about right after uh, Zach and Mary Make a Porno had happened, it didn't do quite as well at the box office, and Kevin had kind of uh, uh, felt a little bit. Uh, that, that, that was actually the point where he had walked away from the Weinstein Company, who had helped him through many years. You know, well, not the Weinstein's at Miramax, and then of course uh, later went on to form the Weinstein Company, and Kevin had produced uh, Clerks Two and. Uh, Zach and Miri under them, and then at that point, Zach and Miri, the fallout from that made him want to walk away from that. So this was kind of his first movie outside of that universe, you know, because before, prior to this, he was, you know, strictly, you know, Miramax boy, a Weinstein boy, and then all of a sudden he's, um, and now all of a sudden he's kind of uh, out there in the world where, you know, like, what, you know, what am I going to do after this? Uh, You know, what am I? How am I going to feel about this? And then also, this was around the same time uh, the uh, the Southwest Airlines incident had happened, and I feel like he was kind of feeling, um, you know, a little down and out about that. Like, you know, I need I need to come back with something that's, you know, that's really gonna, you know, just kind of take the focus off of, I guess, like these aspects of my life and sort of more, you know, like. And and, you know, and I suppose something he was something right. Different. I mean, it definitely took yeah. the focus off, just not in the way you want it. I mean, yeah. this thing, mm-hmm. when it came out, it, it, it sounds like I'm bad-mouthing 
Kevin. I'm not. I do not mean to badmouth Kevin, but the film. I mean, the film has a come in to a point. Yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm going to be honest. It's not. Um, it's really not my out of his entire filmography. It's not my favorite, um, but it. Uh, I mean, it, it has it has a few little moments here and there that you know are chuckle worthy. But I mean, it really. I mean, a, a lot of at least a lot of what was has been shared about the goings on on the set of this movie. You know, it really, that's a, one of the things that I feel is very noticeable when watching it is that you can kind of feel that, you know, some other things well, may have been going on behind the scenes. Right, well, let's kind of, kind of, take away the subtlety. Thing. Let's take away the vagueness of that. A lot yeah. of it comes down to Bruce Willis. All right. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. From everything I've read, everything I've been told, Bruce Willis just wouldn't cooperate with the director. And that, that shows and you take it already not the best script. I don't know why Kevin took the script. Um, it's sort of a weak script to begin with. And then you put it in an actor that just doesn't want to act. I mean, to the point uh-huh. where, like, the poster itself, Bruce Willis didn't even show up to do the poster shoot. They the CGI or Photoshop him in. Yep. Exactly. Like, it's, uh, as far as, uh, as far as that one, I know, I do know that, that that's actually the big one of the big reasons that Kevin had said yes to this, uh, because, uh, um, because Bruce Willis was involved, uh, him and Tracy Morgan, both, um, who, you know, Tracy, uh, well, the, Kevin had actually worked with both of them prior to this, uh, Tracy on James Allen Bob Strike Back. And then, uh, uh, Kevin had actually worked with Bruce Willis once before on, uh, live free or die hard. Kevin had a small right. cameo appearance in that movie. So it's, um, uh, so uh, he had met Bruce before, and I guess the experience on that movie was much more fun. But of course, you know Kevin was only there for about a day, so you know it's, that's not really enough time to. Yeah, yeah, guess, it's really basically a tourist <laughs> sunset. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, yeah, so he thought, oh, I get to direct, you know, one of my favorite movie stars. You know, Die Hard was everything when I was a kid. But well, I just, you know, all this, you know, like he's so excited as anyone would be, I'm sure, to you know work with someone of Bruce Willis's caliber. But then. Um, you know, they get to set and, uh, the, I mean, the, the, Kevin tells this whole entire story in his book, uh, tough shit. Um, uh, if anyone picks that up, it's a fantastic read, but he goes and details this entire story. And basically just from the get go, when Kevin first stepped on the set to, you know, uh, you know, to work with, uh, to greet Bruce, work with him and everything just right away when they because they shot this in Brooklyn on location um, where the movie set, they shot everything there. Um, and, uh, when I remember reading this, uh, Kevin had, uh, was going to meet Bruce, um, to, uh, you know, they were getting ready to start the day and he was, uh, going to Bruce's trailer to meet him. Uh, apparently there were a group of fans outside, like kind of, you know, I mean, far enough away from the set, but like you could see them from the window of Bruce's trailer and uh, Kevin had said like, uh, oh, wow, man, look, uh, all these people, you know, like are screaming for, you know, are screaming for John McClane and everything, you know, and Bruce is like, yeah, don't you hate that? Like, he, you know, just kind of already <laughs> yeah. setting, you know, sort of a negative, like bad vibe, because Kevin's the total opposite when it comes to his fans. <laughs> so, you know, it's really, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, like that just kind of set the tone. And then eventually, yeah, it, it, you know, just get progressively got worse. Like Bruce would, um, if he didn't like the pages for that day, he would you know, just kind of, he would Not just ad for I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And it would, and it wouldn't even be like good ad libs or funny ad libs. I remember Kevin, uh, recalling the story, Kevin said one of them uh, was something to, he tried to make a reference to Maury Povich or something. And it's yeah, like, yeah, Maury Povich and Connie were... Chung, which yeah. is like <laughs> stuck in 1989 or something like that. Like, yeah. you're just going to make like, a pop no, culture no reference. Is. Make, make a recent pop culture reference. No one knows who Connie Chung is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so total way ahead of us. The kids of today are not going to get that. But well, okay, um, but then let's put that in comparison to he also stacks the deck with a lot of great people. Like, I mean, Tracy Morgan and Shaw William Scott and Fred Armisen is in here. A bunch of other people keep popping up, and these are really great people. Yeah, you know that's that's right, and I, I wanted to actually speak about that. I didn't even realize that Fred Armisen was in this, and also uh, like I, I just completely forgot because uh, it had been so long since I've seen it. But uh, Fred Armisen, uh, Adam Brody from that's uh, from right, he's in this. Uh, yeah, Pollock, 
you know, it's like all of these, you know. Yeah, and they're all actors. good actors. They're all yeah, good actors, and, I, and, and they all have comedic chops. I mean, look at Kevin Pollock in uh, Marvelous Miss Maisel. He's really great. Yeah. You know, he's clearly oh, a comedian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Adam Brody can do it. I, I know he was a dramatic actor at the time, but he's a mm-hmm. great actor, and he's good in comedy. And Sean yeah, William great. Scott, I mean, this is near the end of Sean William Scott's, like, public career, but he's still great. Oh, yeah. He's, he, he's honestly probably the – him and Tracy are, like, the two funniest parts of this entire movie, I feel like. See, that's I mean, the thing. Yeah. I, the moment yeah. they both came on screen, I want to see a movie with the both of them. That's the yeah, buddy cop movie yeah, I want. Yeah, that, that, yeah that, uh, that's exactly how I felt. I felt that – well, and I also – I sort of – just a little bit felt that way about the Paul Luck and Brody characters. I was like, you know, these two cops, I'm way more interested in <laughs> 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 as well, as well as over here. But, uh, <laughs> so, and, and I, again, I hate to make it sound like we're picking on one single person, but you go through that list and the one person that stands out that doesn't fit is Bruce Willis. You know, it's like yeah. you can, in a movie, you could tell who's not mm-hmm. playing along, even if it's not apparent on screen, you mm-hmm. feel it. Yeah, and you can and it's you can tell his Bruce's performance in this is just really wooden and kind of out of it. Not really, you know. It's he he just he's not really having fun making it, and it really carries on screen. You know, he's uh, he's it, it's just it, it feels like you know the. I'll, I'll give you one exception around, now. You know? there, there's one point where they're uh, pretending to have a fake phone conversation. They're bashing Adam Brody and Kevin Pollock right near the beginning. Oh, yeah. It's the uh-huh. one real comedic bit between Tracy Morgan and Bruce Willis that clicks. The one oh, time yeah, where no. I think it works. Yeah. Everything else, they're in separate movies. Yeah, pretty much everything else. It's like, and Tracy is just going at it. Like, there's this, uh, when they're staking out the house to catch the Sean William Scott character. Oh, yeah. There's just, there's a, there's a good, like, minute of Tracy just riffing. I mean, it, it feels kind of like you're watching an outtake reel for a second because it goes on for a bit, <laughs> but he's just, he's making all these, because uh, because Sean William Scott is like using the bathroom in the house while he's robbing it. And they, <laughs> they, they start, they start commenting on that and just, uh, Tracy just keeps going off and off and off about this. It's just really <laughs> over and over. That's the comedic yeah, but, uh, power. I mean, you got someone that can yeah. really flex their muscles in a comedy. And I know you and I have talked about this before, like Jay and Silent Bob strike back. Tracy Morgan's only in it for what? Three minutes? And it's still yeah. portable. It's still one of my favorite yeah, he, quotes. It is, yeah, yeah he, he, steals the, he steals the scene in that movie. You know, the, Give me the map, Scott. Um, the map, Scott. <laughs> the map, yeah. I don't know what you just said, little, little man, but you trust me right here. <laughs> uh, he doesn't need to do much to be funny. And so I was oh. baffled watching this thing. Well, like the first 10 minutes, I was tempted to turn it off. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I felt when I revisited it last night. I was like, ooh, ooh this is the. I mean, because I had, I had seen it when it came out. I remember I didn't go to the theater to see it, but I remember getting the DVD when it was out. And it's um, uh, it uh, yeah. I just I, I didn't, but I didn't really remember the movie until I, I went to uh, I went to watch it again. And it yeah, just within that first ten fifteen minutes, it's just not funny. You know, it really doesn't yeah. engage you that whole. I mean, that opening scene, like, they really try to be funny. You know, I can tell that because it's that scene. The, the, interrog- the, the interrogation scene? Yeah, the, inter- yeah, the yeah. interrogation where he's, he's just quoting a bunch of different movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which but, is funny for maybe about a minute, but it goes yeah, on but, way but, too long. It does, and just and it, and they throw in some of the just stupidest ones too. Like he's beating the guy on the table, going Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah, it's like what, what the hell? Like I mean, you just picked random not, ones at this point. Yeah, I mean, I laughed, but not because it was funny, just because I was in disbelief of why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it. Um, yeah, it's uh, – oh, uh, something else I, I would like to um, – I did want to mention here uh, regarding this movie. Uh, it almost didn't have the title that it that it had, and it, uh, the, the, the title for this movie actually didn't come about until they had finished their – until they had released their first trailer, which was maybe – Yeah, I know that's kind of an urban legend in Hollywood. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, yeah because the script apparently had been shopped around since uh, the script had been shopped around since I think like the very early 2000s, and it was just it was just one of those you know never been produced and. Um, uh, finally, when they were going to make it, the original title for the script was "A Couple of Dicks," which is kind of a funny. Which title. is actually a pretty um, good, but, funny, a pretty good title. Yeah, 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 and it's yeah, and it's and and even the dialogue in the movie, um, they even say that uh, they mention that in the movie. I noticed when I did the rewatch, uh, they actually mention that in the movie. So you could like that was their full intended title. Yeah, <laughs> you know why, when they went into I, and it, actually that kind um, of feels like a Kevin Smith title. That's something he do. Yeah, and that that was another reason why they, he had said yes. He said, you know, this is great. You know, it's a buddy cop movie. It's going to feel like a good like '80s fun lethal weapon kind of movie. You know, with uh, you know, with this title, it's good. You know, it's going to be a great comedy. And um, but the only thing was is they were running into the same issues. Uh, actually, even, actually more even more so this time. Uh, is, similar issues to what Kevin had run into with Zack and Mary make a porno. A lot of the networks. Right. Uh, didn't want to run TV spots before nine o'clock at night. And, uh, you know, it's going to be hard to put that on. You can't put that on a poster. They're going to have to censor it in some kind of way. And, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, there was just all of this and Warner brothers wasn't as lenient as the wine scenes were with Kevin on the title. So they ended up, <laughs> uh, so, uh, what Warner brothers did, uh, but they had changed the title to a, from a couple of dicks to a couple of cops. <laughs> and that was, which the title is no them. longer funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and then uh, I just found this out recently uh, from Kevin. Actually, apparently the title that they were going with um, when they were cutting together the first trailer, like the title that they were going with at that point was City Cops. Oh, and it's like it's just horrible. Really, it's like a yeah, bunch of people there. not trying. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, no shit. I mean, was like yeah. what? Yeah, and uh, where where they had gotten the title "Cop Out" was actually, which is actually. You know, the story of the title is kind of clever in that, um, you know, they had gone through all this mess with the title all through production. They're in post-production. They're about to release the movie, and the title is, you know, so shitty. And, you know, some, <laughs> um, I forget who exactly had said it, but someone said to Kevin, you know, yeah, it's kind of like a cop-out, isn't it? And Kevin's like, wait, but that's the title. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because they were copped out of so many different titles. So, And, it, you know, it's kind of funny. It works, you know, but. It worked, well, because it works on a couple, couple of levels, you know, even in hindsight. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like everybody just kind of like, all right, screw it. At least they're honest with each other. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, but, yeah, it, um, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a fascinating film to look at, especially in hindsight. You know, I mean, we're looking at this 10 years on, and we've talked about a lot of Kevin's films and, you know, what they hold up and all, you know, whether or not they've made a pop cultural impact. You're a huge Kevin Smith film, and even you didn't really remember this film up until you rewatched it, like, fairly recently. You know, that, yeah. that says quite a bit. I mean, you're essentially one of the, the biggest Kevin super fans I know, and this made zero impact. Yeah, and I, I got to say this one this one uh, wasn't really super informative for me in terms of the Kevin Smith film, and I mean even when uh, even when Kevin goes to reference it um, at any if you go to any of his live shows or listen to any of his podcasts or even in most recently even in Jay and Silent Bob reboot uh, the movie just doesn't I mean you can tell that he's not particularly I mean he's proud of all his movies obviously but I mean you can tell right. this one's not. He doesn't hold this one to as high of a standard as the <laughs> yeah. situations that it, you know, that has gone on at that time, you know. But um, I mean, yeah, even uh, Zach and Miri got a reference in in reboot. Nothing yeah, from Kafka. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, the, the, I mean, the only the, the only time they mention Cop Out on reboot is just you know to crap on it. So it really, you know, it's not really. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and. Uh, also, it's uh, what's the irony of all of this is, you know, this is kind of the, you know, this is the one that, you know, a lot of fans kind of write off. They don't really pay attention to this one. They all make the argument, well, Kevin didn't write it, so it's not really his, you know, because <laughs> all of that about this movie. It's kind of more or less sort of disowned by the VSQ community. Well, maybe disowned is the harsh word, but, you know, the, this is the one that people don't really associate with as much. But ironically, this is Kevin's highest grossing film. 
Yeah, which is just strange. <laughs> it's always like going yeah. back to the Star Wars films and finding out that, like, the worst film, well, what? Yeah. Phantom Menace, <laughs> yeah. which is just Menace. incredibly <laughs> painful. It's the highest grossing Star Wars film of all time. It's like, shit, yeah. we can do better. I know we can I do better. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, it's, it's, if you're going to introduce people to, to Kevin, this is not the film you introduce people to Kevin with. No, it's definitely not. I mean, uh, you could, you, if you wanted to, you could technically just not even. And that, that's another Kevin. thing that you bring up. It, it doesn't really. Yeah, yeah, you could not even count it. And it, it doesn't really. I don't know. It, uh, I mean, it's it's sort of like how we were talking with Jersey Girl last week. It's uh, you know, it doesn't really feel like a Kevin Smith movie. Um, so, like, I mean. If if the uninformed would well, watch this, they would have they would have no idea that it's a Kevin Smith. I, I'm I'm gonna have to I guess retract that a little bit because after having watched Cop Out, Jersey Girl feels a hell of a lot like a Kevin Smith film, and I would yeah, recommend yeah. Jersey Girl a thousand times more. And you can yeah. see Kevin's heart and soul in Jersey Girl. That's and, true. Yeah. You know, to, to do because once you're out of the view askew, it's a totally different beast, right? But Going with Jersey Girl, going from Jersey Girl to Cop Out, and I and I know Zach and Mary was in between, and that's definitely, I mean, that's going to be a topic for literally another day. But um, it's just the the expanse of I, I don't know care that I mean maybe not care because Kevin puts his care into everything. He he very definitely loves each of his films, but his trademarks aren't in there. There's no like people watch Kevin Smith films for Kevin Smith. You know, we like him, we like his personality, we like his honesty, and we can on some level relate to it. Even Jersey Girl, we can on some level relate to it. Hell, even Zack and Miriam make a porno. There's enough in there that, yeah, I could kind of be this guy. I didn't get that at all with Cop Out. This is like, yeah, I know yeah. he was going for the, the Lethal Weapon, and I love uh-huh. Lethal Weapon. Right? Oh, yeah. But it yeah, just wanted, didn't yeah. work. I mean, Lisa Wessel works because you've got Gibson and Glover, right? When the yeah. pair doesn't match, there's no reason to watch. That's true. And, that's, and it really, you know, I mean, even when I can remember when this was even being announced, I mean, just Bruce Willis and Tracy Morgan, that doesn't really seem like a likely pairing, you know, but I mean, I mean, you watch it and it's like, no, I mean, I mean, Tracy's wonderful. He's hilarious. Oh, yeah. In fact, there's even, um, there's even today, uh, you know, there's a, there's a very popular meme on the internet of that scene where they're in the car and he's you know, just saying, no, you know, no, no, hell no. See, something like that. Popular, popular. <laughs> yeah. So that's since it's gone on to become more very popular internet gift or meme, whatever you want to call it. But, yeah. So, um, so, um, so we in, in just some Kevin fashion, though, I mean, this was made for, well, this was made for a much larger budget than Kevin's used to. And we've yeah. talked about that a lot in previous episodes, but do you think this worked for or against him? It may have actually worked against him. Uh, yeah, I feel like in a lot of ways it did. And uh, also, I mean, in the sense of being, uh, you know, director for hire, I mean, he, uh, you know, he did, this wasn't his script, so he didn't have as much you know, and also this was a much bigger budget with a different studio that he hadn't worked with before. So he didn't really have as much creative control on this movie. I mean, a lot of, uh, a lot of the choices that were made um, actually had to go through approval. Um, you know, a couple of changes, a couple of things had to go through approval for Bruce Willis since he was the star and the highest paid uh, actor on the movie. I know that he had to <laughs> approve Kevin as a director before Kevin was officially hired. Yeah, that's um, so insane. Yeah, which is that that's not something that you hear of very often. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's not but, like this uh, was his second film either. Like I get yeah. moving from like, you know, an indie film to Jurassic Park or an indie film to Star Wars, you're probably gonna have to have some kind of approval. But he's been around yeah. for fifteen years at this point. You know what he does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, there's and there was really honestly, I mean it, that I feel like that was a Google on Warner Brothers part, but um, <laughs> as far as uh, as far as this is concerned, yeah, I feel like it, it did work against him in, a, in the sense that you know he really didn't have a whole lot of control. He didn't he didn't even get final cut of the movie. Um, they had a different editor 
um, come in and do it at the last minute. So I, uh, I, I did hear about that. He didn't even get final cut. So it's really, you know, there was just so much. He was very limited in this, and I feel like that's also another reason as to why a lot of people don't really count it as a Kevin Smith movie. But um, It's like cutting off his, his legs. I mean, he's there because he is such a dynamic director. Right, you know, he writes, he edits, he directs, he, he acts. He does enough that he puts his mark on the film, and it shows. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The only the, like with this film, I feel like the only bits where you can really feel his kind of stamp on it were um, because yeah, uh, I don't think we mentioned that uh, Jason Lee is also in this movie in sort of a minor yeah, role. He plays. That's, uh, uh, yeah. I actually didn't like Jason Lee in this movie, and I never thought I'd say that about Jason Lee. I, he yeah. had no personality in this movie. No, he really didn't. It's uh, you know, and it's it's sad seeing you know him go from Brody to you know just like this asshole character, average bad guy, a, average yeah, you know your, rich yeah, villain. Average. Yeah, that basically yeah, and he's only in just I think maybe five minutes of the movie total. <laughs> you know, it's just, well, problem is they try and make him out to to be this bad guy, and mm-hmm. he's really not a bad guy. Like if you look at what he's trying yeah. to do. He's trying to pay yeah. for his daughter's wedding, this big dream yeah. wedding, because apparently her, you know, Bruce Willis can't afford it. That's actually uh-huh. a good thing. So to turn yeah, this guy into a villain was an odd choice. Yeah, I mean, it shows that, you know, hey, he's being a good stepdad, you know, because he's yeah. doing this. And, and that, that's another thing with the end, the ending. I know they're trying to be funny, but, uh, well, spoilers, the ending of this movie um, they uh, the, the mother uh, Bruce Willis's ex-wife asks if both Bruce and uh, Jason Lee can give uh, the da- uh, their daughter Michelle Trachtenberg um, uh, if they can give her away both at the wedding and um, you know the, he agrees but then at the, the ending of the movie Tracy uh, pulls a gun on Jason Lee <laughs> half down well, which is <laughs> funny but still a dick move. It is, but yeah, it, it is kind of a dick move because it's like, well, I mean, he, he paid for this wedding. He's kind of, you know, entitled to, <laughs> to yeah. do this, you know, and he's, you know, he's a good stepdad, so, but I don't know. Yeah, it's like you've got this yeah. person who's really done nothing wrong, and he's horrible. He's a horrible person. We should, you know, turn into a swarmy 1980s, early 90s style villain, you know, it just doesn't yeah. fit. And, and yeah, again, and I, to, to Jason Lee's credit, we should go back and prove like how much he could do with very little, right? Going back to Jersey Girl, he's only in a couple minutes with Matt Damon, barely has any lines, and it's still funny as hell. With this, he's in a couple scenes. He's technically a key player, and I hate him. Yeah, that's. I mean, it really, it, it just, I don't know. It does, I, like, I had even forgotten until I did this rewatch. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh my God. Like, well, all right, I, and, I and I guess going, going back to the circle and casting, you put Michelle Trockenberg in, in a role that could literally have gone to anybody. She has like yeah, eight exactly. lines. And exactly, she's yeah. another really good comic. We've seen that in Eurotrip. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, and she she's a fantastic actress. I mean, all those years on a, I mean, I'm a, I'm a hardcore Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. Hell yes, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. She she's she's Buffy's sister in that in that show. So it's really, you know, it um, you know, I mean, uh, knowing her from that, knowing her from uh, she was a Nickelodeon kid too. I remember growing up uh, as a child of the '90s. I remember I used to watch her. She was in a Harry at the Spy and. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, just all of these, uh, you know, uh, like, I, I I mean, I'm a hardcore Michelle Trackenberg fan. And in this movie, yeah, she's only really in it, I think, just for the the one scene. Well, there two and, scenes. And the maybe, wedding. You know, just, yeah. Yeah, and the wedding. Yeah, yeah. The one, the, uh, the, in the opening of the movie, she's there when she says hi to Bruce Willis, and then she's there again at the wedding at the end. And that, that's it. <laughs> or done. you could have literally hired anybody and saved a ton of money. I have a strange feeling that, like, letting Kevin go nuts on this movie – would have saved mm-hmm. them like ten million dollars, and you know it would have been a much better film. Yeah, I agree. It, you know, they. Uh, I feel like they really just kind of. I mean, Warner Brothers just really kind of screwed the pooch with this one, you know. But then I've, um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, and I'm. I mean, you know, no disrespect to Warner Brothers. I mean, they produce great content, but it's you know this one just, <laughs> it, it doesn't. Uh, you know, this one just doesn't really. Didn't really do it for me, but um, oh, something else I w- would like to bring up as well. Um, 
that completely just slipped my mind right now. Uh, this uh, during the production of this movie, there was uh, well initially when this was being put together before Kevin was even involved himself. Uh, there were uh, two other actors that were attached to the project that wanted to do a buddy cop movie, uh, uh, Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell. Uh, oh, okay. I mean, yeah. 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 So uh, here's a little, uh, yeah, a little fun history lesson. We, uh, we've seen how that one actually. turns out. It's actually much yeah. better. Yeah. And uh, so funny, funnily enough, uh, they were originally attached to star in this movie and Warner brothers did not, uh, like the way that it was going in terms of um, in terms of creative differences, they wanted to uh, you know uh, Mark and Will had the sense of what they wanted to do you know in a buddy cop movie and Warner Brothers didn't agree. They wanted to go with this script. They wanted to you know have it be like this. So uh, Mark and Will ended up leaving, going to Sony and making the other guys, which came out the same <laughs> right. year as Cop Out and became and the that's that's how you do a buddy cop movie <laughs> well i mean that yeah especially with like yeah. one serious actor and one comedic actor mm-hmm. and it completely works yeah, yeah, yeah it's strange it like perfectly. talk to yeah. anybody and you, you mentioned the two films back to back right you know the other guys or cop yeah. out both of which are uh-huh. on netflix by the way right and they're going to mm-hmm. lean more toward the other guys i forgot yeah, I they think... both came out the same year you're, you're completely right yeah, they did, and that's actually yeah. I uh, I actually went back and read up on it to make sure that I was that that was true because I had heard that previously, and but I wasn't sure if it was true. And yes, they were actually attached to star in this one. <laughs> ended up going to Sony, which if you look at the title now, the other guys, it kind of makes sense as to why they it does. That because, yeah. because... <laughs> It's a, it's almost so like you know. Oh. All right, we know you were disappointed in that film. Here's a better version of that same film. It's like occasionally though. I didn't even think about that. This actually fits. I didn't know this history, but it's like you know uh-huh. Armageddon and what was it the core or something like that. It's like two oh, films yeah. that are exactly the same film back to back. Like mm-hmm. I don't know if you'll call it Captain Marvel and Shazam. I want to call that oh, two yeah. Captain Marvel films. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's almost the same movie, just done yeah. slightly differently. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, uh, yeah. I remember uh, actually. Yeah, there were a, there were a bunch of around the time of Armageddon, a bunch of like different disastrous asteroid or alien movie. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was yeah. I'm that's the that, uh, blame Dean yeah, Devlin and ID Four yeah. for that. But yeah, yeah but no, just the, I, I know it's a trend. Wherever so often you get a run of, I remember. What mid two thousands? There was a ton of Snow White films coming out all around the same time. Like oh, Mirror, yeah. Mirror, and Snow White and the Huntsman came out like within four months of each yeah. other. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, it's, yeah, the, what is it with Hollywood? Like, why do they seem to have a tradition for that? Like, just you know, putting out. I mean, all of these <laughs> the same movies, movie. Same, <laughs> yeah, just basically the same movies, and not just. Uh, not just in the sense of like a same drama. Like, I mean, of course we get, you know, 10 superhero movies a year or whatever it is, but I mean, this is, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, but at least like, you can tell the difference up. between those superheroes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Exactly. They're, but, they're all very significantly different movies, but these are, you know, they put out two of the same movie every year. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah, it's it's good to know. And I see like we I got to go back and revisit the other guys now and see it with fresh eyes. Yeah, I want I want to too because it's been a while since I've seen that one too. And it is it is much uh, much funnier, much more you know. <laughs> and, uh, like that, I, I just want to point out, I am not in any way you know like saying anything to be hurtful or insultful to Kevin. Cause I no, 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 it's, it's definitely not our family, intention no. to we, to bash yeah. these people. And if anything, I no. we should add this. This is a little side note because I mean, Alfie, and we've talked about this in, in earlier episodes. Kevin, in the end, is just trying to experiment and trying different mm-hmm. things, and so this is an experiment for him at a crucial time of time in his life. And it's a shame it didn't work out, but at least he should be applauded for trying to experiment and get out of his comfort zone, even if it didn't really succeed or didn't really make sense. And all of this seems to be pushing him more and more toward where we are now, which is him in complete control. Yeah. And I feel like, uh, and this, this was also, uh, that's another thing. This movie also kind of stands. This was a real pivotal point for Kevin because after this movie, 
um, almost right after this movie, um, uh, after it uh, it didn't do quite as well at the box office as they'd hoped. I mean, it is Kevin's highest grossing film, but compared to what they spent on making and marketing this movie, it really didn't. The numbers really didn't crunch there. Um, and it, uh, you know, it didn't, you know, and it wasn't very well received critically either. And Kevin was again, just kind of like, man, what the hell, you know, this is the exact opposite of the nineties when everything was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, it's just, a shame, especially and, after coming off of Jack and Mary, which is a quality film, like somehow yeah. in between oh, Jersey yeah. girl, Jersey girl and cop out, Jack and Mary is a, a classic and it yeah, feels Jack like a Kevin Smith wonderful. film mm-hmm. and it just doesn't, you know, sandwiched in between the two of these it just doesn't make yeah. sense no and it uh and this was um this was kind of the launch for uh kevin to go back into the indie world with red state which was the next movie he made after this and right um yeah which uh he had actually written red state many many years ago around the time that uh even before zach and mary um, I remember there was uh, he had announced that he was wanting to do a horror film, and which eventually became Red State, and that and that movie was a complete and total indie, just like you know that was the first time he had stepped really stepped back into the indie world since I want to say maybe Chasing Amy. So it really, you know, like this movie kind of set him on the path to really going back into the indie world and having his own control and making his own movies, and we've seen. You know, he's made some some quality flicks since then. I mean, Red State is a solid flick. I personally love Tusk. Um, I think that's a solid <laughs> flick. I also per- I also love Yoga Hoser. <laughs> so which, oh, right, which I makes know. me question <laughs> some of your judgment. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> like, I love yeah, Citizen I, Kane I and Breaking Two. <laughs> I, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't wait until we do that episode because that's the episode, my friend, our listeners, that you are going to see us fight. We are going to. Oh, jeez, yeah. I think it's just gonna be, just going to be, just going to be me saying, "Oh my God!" for forty-five minutes. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> but that's gonna. Uh, well, I can't wait till we do that episode. But, um, but back to cop out. Uh, yeah, this. Um, at the even though it is kind of a, you know, a bit of a slump um, along the path here. At the same time, it's also very pivotal. It took us to. Um, there was a lot of also, uh, I mean, yeah, there was a lot of bad surrounding it at the time, but there were also some good things surrounding it. Um, this was around the time that uh, Kevin was also putting out um, and made a big stamp in the comics world was Batman the Widening Gyre. This was the year that uh, he performed at Carnegie Hall. This was, you know, so it was also, um, oh, yeah. it wasn't all bad. You know, there was some good stuff to be had there as well. But, well, yeah, uh, it's proof that he's a true craftsman and he can do a lot of things mm-hmm. this just wasn't one of them mm-hmm. yeah definitely and this uh you know yeah this one this one doesn't quite um it, even today like you know watching it now that it's the, the now it's out there on netflix if anyone wants to check it out um uh but the, the movie's 10 years old this year i think it just turned 10 maybe i think within the last month and it uh it really um all right let, let, let's get to the heart of this, though. Okay, so this thing yeah. is out. It's out there for free, no less. Would you recommend uh-huh. it as, like, actually sit down and watch it? Or, like, it's so bad it's good, or just skip it all together? You know, I got I to, gotta, I'll be honest with you, no, it's, uh, I can't, in, I mean, I can't in good <laughs> conscience recommend it. Uh, it uh, uh, when I was, when I did my rewatch, I was really struggling to stay attentive to it. <laughs> it um it just uh i mean if you're a fan of if you're a fan of kevin um you don't have to watch it but i mean if if it's one of those things you must then well, you know by all means you know there's you there's, must there's yeah if you run out of everything but, else on netflix watch this yeah yeah or and, the uh, other guys <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah the other <laughs> but um uh, yeah, it's, um, uh, honestly, I can't because, and that, and that's a, another huge thing for me because I'm a big fan of movies that are so bad. It's good. Like I, I live for, <laughs> you know, movie movies like return of the living dead and well, oh, I, I love all those. Yeah. And there, <laughs> yeah, there are plenty of those so bad. It's good films. And I, I watch those on a regular basis, but at a certain point, like this, this isn't that, you know, no, this one's just. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. All right. So our overall basis and the first one we've had in a long time, 
neither of us recommend it. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Also, um, yeah. Uh, also, if I could mention a little light at the end of the tunnel of, <laughs> of cop out. Um, uh, uh, rec- uh, this uh, sort of recently, I want to say within the last. Uh, this happened probably within the last two years. Uh, Kevin had mentioned on uh, one of his podcasts, um, I think it was a Fat Man Beyond, he said um, that he had gotten a call uh, from Bruce Willis, you know, years after all of this had happened, and just, just a random phone call from Bruce Willis, just, <laughs> you know, to, as, if, as if nothing had happened, just, you know, just to be like, hey, how's it going? And um, he was like, hey, I was looking at some old, old pictures of us from the set of Cop Out. Hope you were doing okay. And just, you know, just kind of a <laughs> conversation years later. And Ke- Kevin just, you know, rolled with it, didn't mention any of the old stuff or anything. But I, I mean, if it works, and, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, I was, if, it, yeah. if it doesn't burn any bridges and it gets us to a, a Ben Affleck, you know, reboot moment, then I'm I'm happy with that. Oh yeah, and it's. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I am too. It's just what shocked me about that is, um, in, if if anyone out there uh, reads Kevin's book, Tough Shit, he goes into very excruciating detail what he thinks of Bruce Willis. <laughs> and, like, you know, just years later, Bruce calls him and is like, "Hey, buddy, how are you?" <laughs> uh, it's he's like, um, I, it's like Kevin very publicly. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but hey, you know, I mean, I guess, I guess Bruce never picked up the book, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is we're going to be back next week with a much better film. Zach and Miriam yeah. make a porno is such a better, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's I know such, we're both fans. Better. It's been a while since I've seen it. I can't wait to revisit it. Um, yeah. And, hell, uh, even my that. parents love Zach and Miriam make a porno. Oh yeah, absolutely, and it's uh, um, uh, uh, something that I wanted to mention about that. Uh, the reason we uh, had skipped over uh, Zach and Mary this week in favor of Cop Out was because uh, Kevin has just recently announced that uh, during this uh, um, um, uh, during this uh, current quarantine that's sweeping the nation, everybody wash your hands, stay safe. Um, uh, during this time, he's record, recording some uh, Smodcast commentary tracks for uh, some of his older movies that didn't get the uh, commentary treatment on their DVD release. So uh, last week, he just did um, Jay and Silent Bob reboot, um, the new one, because um, there was no commentary for that disc. So uh, And now he's going to be going back and doing uh, Zach and Mary Make a Porno com- a commentary. So um, we wanted to wait and see if we could gauge that to see if maybe there's some interesting factoids that him and Scott Moser might be able to share with us that we didn't previously know about. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to hear more about that one and uh, be able to tackle some of uh, uh, some of what we hear from that on the next episode. Yeah. Well, we look forward to having you having you there, and uh, stay tuned next week. Yeah. yeah. I'm Travis Hayward here, as always, with Jordan Brandis. This has been our Askew View.